Hi, this is Kenny the Judge Smith, and you're watching 2K TV. This week, 2K TV presents the Chris Webber Invitational. Yeah! Plus, we fill you in on neighborhood events, find out what's going on in my team, An air of confidence to the Suns as they arrived earlier today. Playing in front of their home fans always puts a pounce in your step. And the game arrival, sponsored by Express. Dress like a pro. That's a great look at our location tonight, the home of the Suns here in downtown Phoenix. Good evening and welcome to tonight's presentation of Noche La NBA, an annual tradition in the NBA celebrating diversity. And a quick look here at some of the numbers for Aiton. And guys, I think he's starting to feel the way. And with pregame routines coming to an end, we're just about ready. Well, great attitude. His work inside, a big part of the DA. Thanks. And a look at the starters for the Cavaliers. Sexton and Osman on the perimeter. Kevin Love out there with Andre Drummond. And it's Garland in at the point. And for Phoenix, Rubio and Booker. They're the backcourt. Sharich and Aiton at the four and the five. And it's Oubre in at the three. And the Cavaliers this summer selecting point guard Darius Garland with the fifth overall pick. The second-year man, Colin Sexton, already on the roster. Greg, how do you see the fit between these two players? Well, I mean, both are 6-2. Uh, the questions will come at the defensive end of the floor. O offensively, both show great promise as shooters, very scoring-minded guards, reminiscent possibly of a lillard McCollum pairing for the Blazers, which could be a roadmap for the Cavs. Boy, what determination from Dario Saric. So good at being aggressive around the rim. Here's Sexton. Drops it in from 14 feet away. And hitting the mid-range jumper here early gives the defense just another thing to think about. They're basically saying you're going to have to guard us at every point on the floor tonight if you're going to have any chance. Sharks dishes to Oubre. Off target with his three. So for Phoenix, their last game of loss to Port. Inside, here's Sexton. Doesn't get it to drop for him. Good D by Rubio. Oubre bounce pass. And Rubio kicks to Booker. So the wing on the left. Shot clock at five. Rubio finds Booker. That three off the mark. And so Sexton will bring it up for the Cavaliers. Here's the pass to Garland. The shot that time, not on target. Phoenix is gone. 0 of 2 from deep here. Here's Oubre. Phoenix, no good that time either. Cavaliers have gone 1 of 3 from the field to start this one so far. Now, here's Garland. Tight defense on him. Down low. And Andre Drummond, the bucket on the assist by Garland. A tall and powerful big. Drummond has a natural ability to finish inside. And Rubio kicks to Oubre. Good ball movement here by the Suns. Let's it go from deep. Sinks the three-pointer. But he's got NBA range. There's no doubt about that. Oubre with three and D ability on the wing. Love outside. To Garland. Too long in the paint. He's hit with a three second violation. You can see it, Doris, with some of these good teams trying to build momentum as we get closer to the postseason. You seem to know and understand which teams are good on both sides of the basketball. Are they top five efficiency, offense, and defense? And as you know, Kevin, if there's a player with a hot hand, that can really make a difference in round one. Absolutely. And the technical free throw is good. Greg for the Phoenix Suns with a franchise high nine year playoff drought. There is pressure on this team to find their way out of that long rebuild. And their moves on draft night 
they raised some eyebrows. Look, they've got some young talent, but, but can new coach Monty Williams turn them into a winner? Long-suffering Suns fans certainly hope so. That is a product of pure effort, guys. I agree, and that's nothing new coming from him, GA. He loves going to work on the rebounding, going to work on the board. What about the decisive finish? Great timing, tremendous force. And here are the Suns now. Oubre passes to Rubio. Just five on the clock. Near the three-point line, it's Booker. And the Suns tack on two more. Well, that's the bread, the butter, the main course. Booker's move in the catch-and-shoot money. Free throw line jump shot. And he hits the jump shot. Sexton's got his second bucket of the night. And I like to see this. They're calling his number early, and he's delivering. They know that if this guy goes off, their chances of winning rise exponentially. And Rubio kicks to Ubre. Phoenix needs to get off a shot. And it's Aiton missing. The shot's there for him, and he's got to take it. I, I don't care if he doesn't convert. That's a shot he I'm has out, to I'm continue out. to take. Great teamwork punctuated by a strong finish. Going right to the rim, which is where you want transition opportunities to end. And first time out of the game called for Phoenix. They're moving. little tournament he invited the guests we hosted the competition here it is the first ever Chris Weber Invitational on team Weber we have sub the gamer and joining team Manning is Nate Robinson so here's how it's going to work head-to-head -head. 2k sports welcomes you to the following presentation of the WNBA the WNBA on 2K Sports. And tonight, we've got the Minnesota Lynx playing against the Phoenix Mercury. Joined by Brian Banifatemi and Tim Swartz. I'm Blake Suniga, and we are so glad you've joined us tonight. And Brian, with the physical demands of the game, it's hard to imagine anyone ever feels 100% healthy. Yeah, there are so many nights you just have to gut it out. You know, the aches and the pains, they, they just linger. So you don't really have time to recover during a grueling season. But you're paid to play games, so you have to suit up. And it's just unreal how much these athletes play through. How many put off uh, surgery until the off season? Remember that during this game, I bet you almost no one is operating at 100%. It's really just part of the game. January gets the bucket. An established perimeter threat. Every scouting report has January as an effective shooter. First quarter play, one minute played. Here's Augustus. Good, and it's Odyssey Sims who picks up the assist. They carried out the plan perfectly that time around. January outside. Pass to Tarasi. Here's Griner. Bonner left side. Fouls with the rebound. I guess even she misses those easy opportunities once in a while. Shot off. And it's Phoenix the other way. 
Rossi right side. Laid in with a nice touch off the glass. With an increasing knowledge of the game, January is able to read defenses effectively. Pass to Moore. Collier. Outside Sims. Fouls with it. Reiner's there. Four on the shot clock. The putback. It's good on the putback. What a motor. Fouls, one of the best in the league at converting second chances. Rossi outside. And here's January. Pass to Griner. Bonner. 16 feet out. Good on the bucket. Must be frustrating for the defender on Bonner. You must guard this part of the court, the in-between area. Well, hard to call the last decade of the Lynx anything other than a dynasty. Won titles in 2011, 2013, 2015, 2017. Not bad grabbing a ring every other year. And we're about three minutes into this first quarter. Rossi outside. January left side. Pass to Griner. Here's the three. She can't get that one to fall. The Lynx go the other way with it. And for the 2010s, a decade of dominance for the Lynx, as you said. Yeah, you look at the talent they had during that stretch, Blake. It was unreal. So many stars and two players in every position. And the big thing is they all bought into the system and played for each other. Now here is Augustus. Pass to Sims. Takes it out to Augustus. Moore, Carson covering. Moore attacking. And foul called as she misses, and she's going to shoot two free throws. That's on Essence Carson. The multiple skills of Maya Moore's game, it includes her handles. You almost have to foul her once she gets going to the rack. And guys, for Maya Moore, a laundry list of accolades. She's got WNBA titles, MVP awards, all-star nods, you name it. And really, by pretty much everyone's account, she's a terrific teammate and mentor. The first one falls. And this is what you want from a veteran leader. Moore makes everyone around her better. Her standard of excellence sets a great example. Consistently, one of the league's best scorers. Dependable, responsible. That's why so many young players around the league look up to Maya Moore. So she gets them both. The top pick in the 2011 WNBA draft. Moore has not disappointed since she entered the league. Pass to Turner. Reiner. Luana Bonner for three. They get it again. Reiner. And the rebound paying off as they pick up two on the second chance bucket right there. The Lynx. All right, game one of the Chris Webber Invitational coming up. It's C Manning versus C Webb. Are you ready, Team Webber? We're ready, baby. Let's go. Let's go. LD2K, what's going on? The Bay Ohio City of Denver. The 2K Sports Pregame Show.
It's Friday night and live. And taking a broader look here at the year-over-year scoring trend for Millsap. And maybe it's shocking. Maybe, yeah, maybe not too shocking. But the scoring trend over the last few years has been going down a bit. I'm sure it's something he's well aware of. And we'll see if that continues to be the case. Now, a look at Dallas's starting lineup. Hardaway and Porzingis in at the forward slot. Donchich out there with Seth Curry. And it's Powell in at the pivot spot, manning the middle. And for the Nuggets, the backcourt is Murray and Harris. At the forward slots, it's Barton and Milsen. And it's Jokic in at the five, roaming the paint. It's rebounded by Doncic. And, you know, there are so many things to like about Jokic's game, Clark, and his footwork is right near the top. I would agree with that, Kevin. His footwork is exquisite. I mean, it is top shelf. This guy does not get enough credit for his pivoting. But his hands are great. His touch is phenomenal. He loses a lot of defenders when he's back to the basket with that footwork of his. I tell you, I was so impressed when I locked into him with my isolated camera during the playoffs. The Joker is no joke. Here's Doncic, and it's sent back by Jokic. Outstanding timing from Jokic there. Then the superb reach to wipe away the shot. And now, just over a minute played here in the first, Doncic. He's now one for two with that bucket. How about three or four from the floor to start? That's always a good sign. Guys, they're looking for a way to score here. Yeah, they've had a tough time taking the lid off. Here's Millsap. The shot misses. Nice D from Porzingis. The Mavericks have gone three of four from the field to start out the game. Doncic, no good. For Denver, they've gone 0 of 3 from the field to start the game. Harris passes to Murray. Porzingis against Millsap. Shot clock at 6. Jokic with the bounce pass. Martin from outside. That one's off. He starts the game with a miss. They are 0 for the game thus far. 0 of 4 here. Still looking for their first mate. And Doncic gets it to go. And the story here, Kevin, early on is how well they've shot the basketball. Very high percentage so far. And if you want to start a game hot, that's the way to do it. And here is Harris after Luka Doncic hitting the three. Harris against Curry. They could use a bucket. Porzingis with the block. Boy, Porzingis doing a nice job staying in position and then using his reach to block shots. Curry gets the bucket. Curry's got his second bucket. And now you see them starting to really work the ball inside. And Denver decides to take their first time out here. Well, with the playoffs coming up quickly, Clark, strength of schedule can play a big role as it uh, determines where a team is going to be seated uh, come playoff time. No, I agree with you in terms of even just making the playoffs sometimes, Kevin, yes. based on where teams are and who they're playing. I mean, those matchups against potential playoff teams that are still fighting for seeding, they can sharpen you up and get you ready. And actually, those games can be playoffs before the playoffs in many ways. And I always admire the coaches, Clark, that walk their play through the different scenarios because they should be aware. Yeah, I agree with you wholeheartedly. Um, you want everything out in front of you as long as your team is able to handle it, and most of these teams can. I think that's a good point. Here's Murray. Tim Hardaway making his last shot. Murray, the pass to Millsap. Porzingis with the block. And now the fast break. Doncic with the ball. Here's Curry. Here's Powell. And no good that time. And it's Denver the other way. They come into this one following the loss to the Mavericks. Donchich with the steal. And here we go. The Mavericks in a fast break. Donchich leading the charge. It's Powell on the wing. Jokic defending. Curry is inside. Harris is there. Curry can't get it to go. The Nuggets trail by 13. Let's go now to the sideline and catch up with David Aldridge. Well, Mike Malone gave me a few minutes to catch up with him. Defensively, they'll be focused on Luka Doncic. 
Young point forward and rookie of the year is so crafty attacking and creating shots for himself and others. Kevin, they'll have to be just as smart as Doncic in covering him and trying to contain him. Thanks, David. And he drops it in from the low post. Doncic has got his third basket of the night. And the defense looks soft early on. They've got to summon up a little more sense of urgency. Yeah, they've got to do a little more to disrupt their offensive rhythm, too. I just gotta keep grabbing rebounds and I think I'll be all right. But this is, uh, you, you're making it tough on me. Caruso. Here's McGee. Oh, good move. Brian Benefitemi, I'm Blake Suniga, and we've got a fun one. Well, guys, there's so much talent in this league beyond the superstars. Of that category, who are some of your favorite players to watch? Well, Blake, I like the game of Elizabeth Williams. She's won the Most Improved Player Award not too long ago, a capable scorer and rebounder. She's also a quality shot blocker, always lurking around to make plays. Well, I got to say, I'm a huge fan of John Quell Jones a rising star in this league. She's already one of the WNBA's best rebounders. She also has a solid handle and can hit from long range. Talk about a unique combination of skills. Just five on the clock to the wing on the left. Here's Young. Off target with the three. And that one's good, Montgomery. The willingness to get out and run is only a part of what makes Montgomery such an asset to her team. Now here's Cambage. Wilson outside. Pass to Young. For three. The offensive rebound. And they pick up two. Well, a focal point of Wilson's game is crashing the glass. And she really just refuses to quit on any play. Now here is Hayes. Back to Montgomery. A beautiful reverse layup. Oh, she's got such a great touch and feel around the rim. She made that reverse look easy, but trust me when I tell you, it's not. Plum with it. He's guarded by Hayes. On the wing, Kayla McBride. Doesn't get it to drop for her. Jessica Breland with some nice D. On the wing, Angel McCautry. Back to Montgomery. Hayes. Shoots over Wilson. And it's Hayes missing. Not pretty. Gotta just uh, shake off a miss like that. They need a good offensive possession. Yeah, it's been a long time without a bucket. Focus. Chelsea Plum drives in. Williams with the steal. Here's McCautry. Makes it off the glass. They're off and running. They've knocked down four of their first five. One of the more physical bigs, Elizabeth is a nightmare to try and score on. She puts her athleticism on full display when she rejects shot after shot. Now here's Young. Three. And there's the three-second violation. Ed 
Atlanta leading. Montgomery outside. On the wing, Angel McCautry. A kick out to Hayes. Six to shoot. Wilson pulls it down. Yeah, we, we all know Williams is a great shot blocker, but she does so much more than that. Yeah, Elizabeth is truly a relentless rebounder with timing and recognition. She chases boards down beautifully. Now here's Young. Still getting warmed up offensively. No buckets yet in the game for her. Outside Hayes. Pass to McCautry. Now Montgomery. McBride covering. McCautry outside. Unloads from 13 feet. Drained for two points. So far, so good for them at the offensive end in the early going. Their field goal percentage is terrific. UK. Trying the base run in a hurry and make a difference at the other end. Don't think I've seen any player oh. do the things oh. in his side. Go AD. Oh no, 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 don't turn it over. Oh no, it's a bad turnover. Oh, rep, come on. People could not wrap their head around what it is. And in the locker room, each guy has been going over and through his own routine to get ready. But once they take the floor, they're one single unit. There it is, maybe the most famous building in all. And nothing tips off a broadcast like it. Well, point forwards and big guards in demand. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Now we have a moment to look at how the blocks have been stacking up over the past several months for Aldridge. We're just not seeing that same fierceness out of him defensively these last few months. He's lost a little bit of that intimidation factor. He's not blocking as many shots, and he's not making the same impact on that end of the floor. So here is Miami's starting group. They've got Robinson. Am Adebayo is out there with Jones. Then there's Jimmy Butler. And it's none in at the one. And for San Antonio, we've got LaMarcus Aldridge. Miles out there at the Rose. Then there's Murray. And it's Forbes in at the two-guard spot. Here's DeRozan. Another shot. He takes it up and lays it in. He seems to be in the right place at the right time more often than anybody that's on the court here tonight. We see that pay off. Now the pass to Butler. Here's none. He had an 18-point outing in the last game against Charlotte. He sinks the 11-footer. Nunn's got his second bucket of the night. Brandon, looking ahead to the playoffs, when you made your first postseason appearance, were you surprised by the intensity you found once you got there? Kevin, it was my second season. I was playing for the Clippers, so getting into the playoffs was quite miraculous on the tone, of course, sure. for the organization. 
uh, but the level of detail in the playoffs and intensity in the playoffs they know everything that you're going to do and we were playing against the Utah Jets which at that time some pretty good players yes, Carl Malone yeah. John Stockton <laughs> Jeff Hornacek the great Jerry Sloan as a head coach it was a wonderful experience but you understood that the playoffs were different absolutely something different in terms of uh, the intensity and what it is that that team knew about you Rose and dishes to Murray. From 15 feet away, it's Autobio with the rebound. Well, he's a guy they count on to produce from the mid-range. He doesn't miss too many open looks from there. And you can see that Butler is the total package. Solid at recognizing when one of his guys is open. Here's Murray. It's Autobio with the rebound. For him, it's harder to miss that shot than it is to make that shot. I think he was anticipating a bit of a bump there. None passes to Autobio. Rebounded by the Spurs. I want to keep it rolling here following the win against Dallas. They shot the lights out from deep. Really stretched out the defense in that one. Yep, made the defense work extremely hard and did a nice job of getting any advantage they could against the team that shot it well. None passes to Butler. And oh boy, a lot of contact there, but he gets the call and will shoot two. And you look at Jimmy Butler. He was about 6'8", about 230 pounds. Uh, great, great size on the wing. And he keeps himself in tip-top shape. His strength, one thing I'm not sure that... That was actually a big miss. I can't make my free throws with LeBron. Hello and welcome. It's the WNBA here on 2 Face Sports. Our game tonight featuring the Indiana Fever as they go up against the Connecticut Sun. Alongside Tim Swartz and Brian Benefitemi, I'm Blake Suniga. Thanks for joining us. So the Sun win the tip. And guys, the league seems to be playing at a faster pace nowadays. Will there come a time when every team plays up-tempo? Well, I think every team plays up-tempo in some sense during games. But I just don't see every team making that their main offensive philosophy. Agreed, Tim, which is rare. But the up-tempo style is great when you have shooters that can capitalize on open looks. But so many teams in the league still have quality bigs that can do damage in slower pace half court sets now here's wheeler mitchell outside and a foul called on the shot got her on the way up that time so she'll shoot two well guys we all know going from college to the WNBA just isn't an easy transition just past kelsey mitchell the speed of the game threw her off a bit at first but she learned to be patient and trust the process Free throw is good. 
Yeah, and despite the difficult adjustment to the pro game, uh, Mitchell's potential remains through the roof. I wish I could say the same about your potential, Blake, but Mitchell is someone that's shown great flashes as a scorer and distributor, and her learning curve has allowed her to formulate a game plan and play in attack mode. I see her as a difference maker that'll be around for a while. And this Indiana Fever team in the middle of a rebuild. Now, we know they've had a long stretch of success, but the youth movement is now in full force. Now, here's Williams. Just five to shoot. 20 feet out. Here's Strickland. It's good, and she makes her first shot of the game. He got caught standing around that time and giving up the second chance points. They need more effort than that on the boards. That can't happen. Absolutely. Up top, Wheeler. She's covered by Thomas. Outside of Chanwa. Pass to Wheeler. Laney outside. Misses the three. And the fever rebuilding, as you mentioned. All well, the youth they have really looks promising. Really good job to collect picks and inject a lot of potential difference makers to the roster. It'll take time, but the foundation is being set. Now here's Dupree. Now here's Achanwa. She's covered by Strickland. Back to Achanwa. Stolen by Jones. And they're pushing it up. Here's Williams. Offensive rebound. Count it. It's tough for defenders to neutralize Thomas's impact. She plays every game like it's her last, and I think you have to admire that if you're a fan of basketball or really sports in general. Pass to Dupree. It's rebounded by Thomas. Such tough defense there against one of the better finishers in the game. Jones. And so she earns a trip to the line. Official saw the contact, and she'll shoot two. Natalia Chanwa picks one up. With a six-foot-six frame and indisputable talent, Jones has become a key cog to her team's success. Shooting two. And the first one drops. Well, the transition to the WNBA is not easy. And just ask Jonquel Jones, who didn't play much her rookie season. But she still had an incredible second season in 2017, setting the WNBA record for rebounds in a season. So she gets them both. Yeah, it was great to see Jones find her way with Connecticut. I mean, becoming an all-star for the Sun and winning 2017 Most Improved Player. Well, guys, she didn't just set the rebounding record. Jones shot easily over 50%, a huge reason why the Sun made the playoffs for the first time in five years. Back to Wheeler. Can they get it? Indiana again missing. The Sun with the lead. To the middle. Thomas, no good. Well, good defense in the paint. Worth its weight in gold. It absolutely is. And we just saw it right there, didn't we? Without her presence, that's an easy two points. And there's the call on Alyssa Thomas. That's her first foul. Here's Mitchell. And too long on the shot. That's a shot he's got to hit. You don't get too many better looks than that ring. Pass to Thomas. Back to Clarendon. Jones with it. He's covered by Mitchell. Shot clock at five. Number three, Shakina Strickland. The basket good off the assist from Jonquel Jones. Teamwork is important to Jones. She has excellent chemistry with her teammates and just does what's best for everyone. I'm